This is Trend Following Radio, where great thinking comes alive. Nobel Prize winners, legendary traders, best-selling authors, and the pros that know what drive us irrational human beings. I am your host, Michael Covell. Not filtered, raw, honest. That's my passion. I just love that opening song. Phil Spector, as crazy as he was, locked up in jail for the rest of his life for killing somebody. That man could do wonders in a studio. His music, phenomenal. That opening song, though, was not Ronnie Spector, was not Phil Spector's wife. That was a South Korean girl group that I saw on the internet, and I thought their take was just awesome. It put me in a good mood, so I let it play a little bit longer. That mood they put me into, that mood is mission critical for good investing, good trading. You want to be in that secure, middle of the road, not too up, not too down place. Mentally, that's where you want to be. The science is all in. I just thought that was a great place for me to start today. But what I really want to dig into is a subject that I've touched on before. The activist billionaire investor, Bill Ackman, his hedge fund of note, and his investment in the company, the pharmaceutical company, Valiant Pharmaceuticals. What a mess this has been. What an absolute disaster this has been. Bill Ackman, for those of you that don't know, a relatively young guy has made his billions. I mean, if you think just having billions in the bank is all that counts, turn this podcast off now because my voice won't matter. I do not have Bill Ackman's net worth, but I think I have something on my side that's more important, and I'm going to break that apart during this podcast. What caught my eye was a market watch com article. Quote, we are on the brink of a catastrophe. And it talked about a bunch of highlights from Bill Ackman's valiant emails. This was the behind the scenes conversation that Ackman was having with key players about valiant, basically how to save it. These documents came from a Senate committee that's been looking into the whole episode, the various roles and reactions of all the top players involved in this accounting and pricing scandal. The first excerpt that really caught my eye, again, this is behind the scenes, Agman with key players, quote, Valiant has become toxic. We're on the brink of a catastrophe. You've previously made the mistake of waiting while Rome was burning. There is now a conflagration. We are on the brink of a tragedy, end quote. Okay, I guess I'd be saying the same thing if ultimately a massive position I was in was headed south by nearly 90%. But then again, I would not stay in a massive position that was headed south by upwards of 90%. I would get the hell out with a stop loss. But when you're an activist investor, it doesn't work that way. You get in and you stay in for the long haul. You get in and it's not just, for example, like in my trend following world, follow the price, let the price dictate the price is the only truth. In Bill Ackman's world, the price is not the only truth. As this crisis has been playing out over the last year, Ackman and Valiant senior management have left cookie crumbs for all of us to digest behind the scenes. Interesting insights that perhaps we can all learn something about our own investing and trading. And perhaps we can learn even more about the differences between fundamental trading and technical or trend-following trading. Here's a great excerpt from the article that really illuminates this distinction. So last year, Warren Buffett's number two, Charlie Munger, a very well-respected voice. He's not a trend-following trader, but I have to admit, I love many of the things that Charlie Munger says. Not that I have to admit this. I mean, I do. I believe it. He says some really great things. He's had immense success highly respected individual. 
And so last year, Munger came out and said that Valiant was like ITT and Harold Genin come back to life, only the guy is worse this time. End quote. So basically, Charlie Munger, one of the most respected voices on the planet when it comes to money, markets, finance, goes ahead and nails the you-know-what at a Valiant. I mean, just rips them a you-know-what. If I'm a major investor in Valiant like Bill Ackman, I'm not happy that Charlie Munger has now come out and ripped my baby. I'm not happy about this at all. So what does Ackman do? Well, the Senate documents show he came out really quickly and sent his complaints directly to Warren Buffett. Now, never mind that Charlie Munger is a billionaire who can stand on his own two feet, just like we see with little kids. Ackman didn't go directly to Munger at first. He went to Buffett. And so he writes to Buffett, quote, Charlie's words carry a lot of weight. So his statement is unfortunate if Charlie is wrong on the facts, which I believe to be the case. End quote from Ackman, from Ackman to Warren Buffett. So we can now get a glimpse of what goes on behind the scenes. These superstar names that we all hear about and the strategies that they come out and talk to us about on the tube, in press, in media. Well, behind the scenes, they're all having their own little conversation. And guess what? When you got a few billionaires talking, shit can move. Shit can happen. It's no longer just about market forces when you're at this level. When you have this much money concentrated in the hands of a few people. Well, we all know how that works. Ackman continued to Buffett, quote, We've gotten to know Valiant and then CEO Michael Pearson well over the last year and believe the company is creating real value while helping to restructure part of an industry that has not been a good steward of shareholder capital or productive in generating products to contribute to the health of humanity, end quote from Ackman. Again, that was from Ackman to Buffett, not Ackman to Munger. We don't know, or at least I've not seen yet, what Buffett's response was to Ackman. However, a day later, with Munger's email address in hand, Ackman wrote to him, quote, while short-term performance is not evidence of long-term value creation, I believe that if you were to study the facts, I'm thinking here, hold on, hold on. This is Mike interjecting. The facts? What the fuck facts are we talking about? If you were to study the facts, you would conclude that Valiant has created real long-term economic value while simultaneously becoming one of the most productive in new drug development, large pharmaceutical companies in the world. That was Ackman writing to Munger. So you can see behind the scenes the influence, the arm twisting, the attempts at arm twisting, because he knows damn well that Charlie Munger's voice carries weight. Now, I don't know what Ackman knew about this company, Valiant, exactly at the time that he was writing Buffett and Munger. We all have to hope that he did not know how bad things really were. Because if he did know how bad things really were, well, he doesn't look like a very good guy. He looks like he's crossed the line. Now, as this situation unfolded, after an October 21st, 2015 report from short seller Citron, which accused Valiant of accounting, you know what, cooking the books, the company's stock price tumbled 40%. Ackman advised Pearson and the general counsel there, quote, if something like this happens again, you should call the New York Stock Exchange and have them halt the stock until you can respond to the critic with a press release, end quote. So behind the scenes, ladies and gentlemen, we now know how the system works. Behind the scenes, if you're a billionaire investor and you've got an absolute fortune bet on some company and the market says, we don't like this company, we're dropping it 40% today. If you're a billionaire investor, you actually think that you can control the market. You actually think that you can control the New York Stock Exchange and you could have them stop the damn stock. Think about that. Do you really fucking think that Ackman is the only one writing such emails behind the scenes? The only one in power saying such? 
Are you kidding me? What he has opened is Pandora's box. What he has opened is the system, the fundamental system that you people out there that want to bet on fundamentals, it's all nonsense. It's all made up. Is that my opinion? Actually, no. It's the opinion of the guy whose emails that I'm reading. He's telling you loud and clear. Whether you want to believe him or not, he's telling you how it works. As this story kept playing out, eventually, the New York Times had an op-ed and compared Valiant to Enron. This caused Ackman's tone in emails to change. So he's been out there pushing behind the scenes on Buffett and Munger. He's been telling the management team, here's what you need to do and call the New York Stock Exchange. But now, now time has marched on. And now the New York Times has got an op-ed out that says Valiant is essentially Enron. Ackman then writes, when Mike said that you were running out of time on the call, he was right and that the company is running out of time to save itself. Valiant has become toxic. We are on the brink of a catastrophe. You have previously made the mistake of waiting while Rome was burning. There is now a conflagration. We are on the brink of a tragedy. In another late October email, 2015, Ackman warned Pearson, quote, I don't think you're handling this correctly, and the company is at risk of getting into a death spiral as a result. How the hell are you supposed to handle it correctly if the company's a scam? If the market says the price is supposed to drop 40%, 50%, 60%, 70% for damn good reason, there's not really any way you can handle it. And if behind the scenes you're talking about handling it, what the hell does that mean? Handle what? This is just one example. I'm not even doing this podcast because I really give a crap about Valiant or Bill Ackman. I could care less. What this is, though, is the over-the-shoulder look, the behind-the-curtain peek at how Oz really moves the levers. Because if this is happening in one company, imagine what's happening across the board. And as the final death spiral starts in 2016, in late March 2016, Ackman wrote Pearson and other senior management about a new media strategy. Quote, we need to put out more press releases with good fundamental news. Ackman wrote in a March email. This could be two or three releases with AARP going today. Let's sync up about other good fundamental news, end quote. At this point in time, in this conversation, what is the definition of fundamental news? I, seriously. <laughs> I mean, would it be fair for a reasonable person at this point in time to say that fundamental news can mean anything you want it to mean? Does it have to be the truth? In this context, does fundamental news have to be the truth? Can it be anything? Because what positive fundamental news was there for this company in 2016? It's been taken out to the backyard and beat with a fucking two by four by the marketplace. The marketplace has basically said, you are Enron. Whether they're 100% Enron or not, the market has said, you are Enron. There's too much smoke here. We think there's a fire back there. And here's what we're going to do to the market price. And here's where it gets even seedier. Deep state-like stuff. Apparently a government staffer, very sympathetic to the Valiant story. And let me quote from the article. An analyst for Pershing Square, Ackman's firm, Jordan Rubin, put Pearson in touch with the House of Representatives staffer, this guy Nick Ulick, in December 2015, writing that Ulick would be very sympathetic to your side of the story off the record. He is very pro-business and wants to have an adult conversation about the issues. I explained the economic and social logic of your business plan, and he got it immediately. Who gives a c about what some congressional staffer thinks? Oh, well, I guess behind the scenes, if some of these hedge funds and some of these companies 
and Congress are all in bed together to rig something, to push something, to cajole something to whatever desired direction they want that has nothing to do with reality, well, then we've got another damn insight as to how the sausage is made, don't we? And let me connect this to the media, too. Quoting from the Market Watch article, in a mid-March 2016 email, apparently prompted by a request for comment from the Financial Times, Ackman wrote that the outlet had heard about disagreements on Valiant's board, about its reset expectations, as well as about other board members not wanting such and such guy to be on the board. Ackman wrote, we of course are not commenting. Number one, one or more director's employees is clearly leaking to the FT and other media, end quote. Ackman goes on, without being in any way accusatory, Mason, please call Jeff Uberin, the chief executive officer of Value Act Capital, who has long backed Valiant, to make sure he is not speaking with the media. This is very damaging to the company. Behind the scenes, you're calling Buffett and Munger. You're calling congressional staff members. You're talking about happy, happy press releases. You're trying to fix the media. But the market price was telling the truth. That's what's so great about all these lines. I mean, like, again, who cares about Valiant and Ackman? I mean, if you were dumb enough to have an investment in Valiant and you watched it drop 90%, you deserve that drop of 90%. You were just foolish. You had no plan. You were guessing. You were gambling. It's all one big dice roll to you. But all of this, this entire thread, Ackman's reaching out to Buffett Munger, Ackman's people reaching out to congressional staff members, reaching out to the media. Who are you going to believe? Who are you going to believe for the rest of your life when you can say in 2016, and this is long after the dot-com bubble, in 2016, when we now know full well behind the scenes how the fundamentals are made, how they are created, how they are engineered. And you think when you open up the Wall Street Journal and you think when you turn on CNBC, you're getting accurate information that you can invest on, just like Warren Buffett. You're just like Warren Buffett. Actually, no, you're not like Warren Buffett because Bill Ackman didn't call you. He called Warren Buffett. So if you're out there as an investor or a trader, I don't see how Valiant and Ackman are not just, again, the reminder of the idiocy, the incompetence of relying on fundamental information and news to make investing and trading bets. And who are you going to believe? After I've just read all these examples, who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe Bill Ackman, the billionaire activist investor, or are you going to believe me when I tell you that the only thing you can believe is the traded price each day? Because if you look at the traded price of Valiant over the last year, it told you one thing. Get the hell out or get the hell short. That's all it told you. That's the reality. That was the best bet you could ever make. And it will be the best bet you can make for the rest of your life in any damn market. Because you're never going to have all the information. They're going to keep it from you. They're going to rig it. They're going to massage it. They're going to fake it. They're going to make it up. And you're going to sit there and delude yourself that you could be a fundamental trader? Well, a lot of people like to delude themselves. A lot of people love that crap. One of the tough things as an investor or a trader is you really are up against dark forces. You're up against people that want to make money at any cost in any way possible. That's not singling out any one particular person. 
It's just what you're up against. Many of these people don't play fair and they don't have to play fair. But if you know you're up against this system, this very black system that doesn't care for you, doesn't care if you lose all of your money, you've got to fight back with intelligence. You have to fight back with smarts. You have to fight back with good strategy. You can't just sit there and accept what the system gives you because the system is going to give you exactly what it wants to give you. And that's a full frontal lobotomy bent over a log. And you'll be asked if you're enjoying it all. I see a time when those awake will understand how to make money in up, down, and surprise markets. Whether new trader or experienced, college student or financial advisor, protecting against a crash or just trying to make a lot of money, Trend Following offers everyone an answer in uncertain times. To get started immediately, send me an email, michael at covell.com. I will send you the right trend following steps to take along with my free video. But if you want to buy and hold, trust the government and trust Wall Street. This is absolutely not for you.